He was the seventh president of the United States. Andrew Jackson was one of our most controversial presidents. Some say he was the father of our democracy and a great man for bringing people into the idea of a democratic government. Others say he was an uneducated, ill-tempered, vengeful man determined to have his way, regardless of the impact on the Constitution or on American democracy. John Marshall has made his decision, now let him enforce it. That was one of his most famous quotes. His support for and reinforcement of the Indian Removal Act was a shameful period in American history. Thesis Statement President Jackson's acts of criminal disobedience of the Supreme Court's decision were responsible for the broken hearts and lost lives along the Trail of Tears. Early History and Conflict The Cherokee land was originally in modern-day Tennessee, Kentucky, Virginia, North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, and Alabama. Their first contact with Europeans was with Hernando de Soto and his troops in 1540. In the early 1600s, the Cherokee began trading with the British colonists. They traded animal skins for things such as guns, cloth, glass, and tools. Trade changed the Cherokee culture immensely. They didn't need to hunt and farm to survive anymore. They could simply trade what they had for even better things. They fought alongside the British in both the French and Indian War and the Revolutionary War. When the Americans won the war, they took away some of the Cherokees' land for their own towns and villages. History Contributing to the Trail of Tears Before the Indian Removal Act, the Cherokee had been recognized by the government as their own nation. Though the state of Georgia didn't quite see it that way, the Cherokee had a lot going for them, such as an alphabet in their own language by the Cherokee scholar Sequoia, their own constitution, much like the United States' own, and their own day-by-day -day newspaper, the Cherokee Phoenix. In 1828, gold was found on Cherokee land. Hundreds of white men started setting up camp near there, pushing them farther and farther west. In 1830, the Indian Removal Act was passed, allowing the government to pay Native Americans for their land and then relocate them to a reservation in Oklahoma, which was at the time thought of not to be suitable for white men because the land was hard to farm. The Cherokee were divided in between those who wanted to leave the Treaty Party and those who refused to give up the land of their forefathers, the Ross Party. Named for their chief, John Ross, who wanted to reach an agreement with the government to keep their land. Most people supported the Ross Party. So the Cherokee went to court and tried to sue the state of Georgia, arguing that, since they were a separate nation, the United States did not have a right to take their land. Ironically, the court would not accept their case because they were a separate nation. So then they got Samuel Worcester, a missionary who lived in their village, to go to court for them since he was a U.S. citizen. This time, Chief Justice John Marshall ruled in favor of the Cherokee. However, the victory was short-lived. Secretly, the treaty party signed the Treaty of Nueva in 1835, agreeing to trade Cherokee land for the land in the West, and enough money to get there. The rest of the Cherokee were shocked and outraged because the treaty party was a very small group and did not have the right to represent their whole tribe. So over 16,000 Cherokee, including John Ross, signed and sent a petition to the government to protest the signing of the treaty. However, President Jackson hardly glanced at it. The government gave the Cherokees two years to leave their land or be forced. The Trail of Tears Two days after the deadline, most Cherokee were still there. President Jackson sent General Winfield Scott and 7,000 soldiers to remove them from their homes and lead them west. They were put in holding pens like cattle, where there wasn't nearly enough food or blankets for everyone, and disease struck many before the actual march. Once they set out, the Cherokee people were divided into 13 separate groups of about a thousand each. 
They had to travel around 800 miles in all to reach their new homes. The conditions were terrible. Most walked with bare feet and even the elderly were forced to carry heavy packs on their backs. They had to sleep on the bare ground and keep walking through rain or snow. Nearly a third of them died before the march was over. They buried at least 13 dead at every stop. They were not even allowed to have a proper burial, and they had to bury them on the side of the road. This long trail was called the Trail Where They Cried by the Cherokees and the Trail of Tears to Us. The Trail of Tears was a very heart-wrenching episode in U.S. history. What will happen to us? Your father died last night, they tell me. My mother and my father's clan members are crying. It just doesn't seem real. Nothing seems real. We are led out of the stockade. The guards all have guns and are watching us closely. We walk. My mother keeps me close to her. I wish I had a blanket. But the mountains are behind us. Each day, we start walking a little later. They bury the dead in shallow graves because the ground is frozen. As we walk past white towns, the whites come out to watch us pass. No words are spoken to them. No words are said to us. Still, I wish they could stop staring. They made me leave our homes. They made us walk to this new place that we are heading in the middle of winter. I don't like these people. When I went to sleep last night, my mother was hot and coughing worse than usual. When I woke up, she was cold. I tried to wake her up, but she just lay there. My uncle pulls me from her. My aunt begins to wail. My mother's death, I do not understand. But I suddenly know that I am alone. I want to cry. I want to scream in rage. I can do nothing. The soldiers make us continue to walk. I walk in loneliness. I know what it is to hate. I hate the people who killed my father and mother. All they ever saw was the color of our skin. All I see is the color of theirs, and I hate them. Nearly 2,000 people died in the stockades, and 6,000 more on the Trail of Tears. That's a total of 8,000 for the Cherokees only. The Creeks, Choctaws, Seminoles, and Chickasaws were all moved to the Indian Territory as well. The Cherokee Nation has endured a lot and held out to their very last whim and fought as hard as they could without resorting to violence. They had to change their ways to please white men. They were striped of their land, most of their possessions, and loved ones. Although President Jackson believed he was making the right decision for the United States by removing the Cherokee from their land in what was supposed to be a humane manner, Ultimately, for the Cherokee, it became the Trail of Tears. The Cherokee Nation will be forever remembered as a strong, peaceful, humble, and self-sacrificing people. Today, the Cherokee live mostly in Oklahoma, but some still remain on traditional land. They live and dress like regular people, but some still keep their old customs and traditions. The nation now has 220,000 tribal members and is the second largest tribe in the United States.